Central and Eastern Washington has been affected by prehistoric volcanic eruptions from other volcanoes in the Cascades, such as Mount Rainier and, and Mount, uh, Glacier Peak and, and Mount St. Helens. All those active volcanoes and more along the Cascades are being closely monitored by the USGS. John Major is the scientist in charge at the USGS Cascades Volcano Observatory. They're, they're not these quiet stately monoliths just sitting there. Um, there's, there's lots of chatter and, and talking going on. And so we're monitoring all that and we're trying to understand what is typical background because then what we want to be able to understand and pick up early is what's abnormal, what's, what's unusual in that monitoring signal. While there are emergency plans in place for future eruptions, the volcano's history and their behavior is also being uncovered. For example, the massive landslide that was documented at Mount St. Helens was thought to be unique and unusual. But after the event, scientists learned that landslides and changes to the local geography has happened several times for many active volcanoes in the region. The landslide that we saw off Mount St. Helens, that's happened at Mount Rainier in the past, that's happened at Mount Hood in its past, that's happened at Mount Shasta in its past. So all the processes that we saw that morning have happened at all our other volcanoes. But the lateral blast of the 1980 eruption remains a defining feature of Mount St. Helens' most recent eruption. And while that eruption left a layer of ash across the inland northwest, this was nothing compared to one of the most catastrophic volcanic eruptions the Pacific Northwest has ever seen. Um, all we have to do is go back roughly 7,000 years to Crater Lake. Mount Mazama is known for a massive catastrophic eruption. An eruption so large that the mountain peak itself collapsed after the magma and gases were released leaving the caldera that's now Crater Lake behind. And 7,700 years later, this huge layer of ash was discovered just a few feet beneath us, right here in Spokane County, where Andy Buddington was able to study this incredible observation. Now we have 71 centimeters of ash documented out at Saltese. The thickness of the ash can become over thickened, but nonetheless, we were able to correlate it to uh, Mount Mazama, Pacific Northwest volcanoes will continue to be a part of our past and future. But as the mountains rest, there is a beauty left behind. The, the Palouse region is underlain by a special type of soil known as Luss soil. And with these periodic eruptions of ashy material, which is enriched in many different chemical elements, help kind of fertilize the soil. Re uh, invigorate the soil with essential nutrients and, and elements. So the USGS remains up to date with their computer modeling regarding what would happen if a 1980s magnitude eruption would happen today. And get this, it's actually updated daily. Yeah, it's uh, you can find that on the USGS website uh, and it's under the Mount St. Helens tab and they literally take the weather modeling, you know, the wind flow, and if that eruption were to happen, they would be able to predict where that ash wow. would go That's and so where cool. it would fall. That's, That's so interesting. It really is.